<laughs> Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We made it. We've kept <laughs> Frank LeBoff. This is out of control Robert now. <laughs> it is out of control. Uh, as has the match day been across Europe mm. this weekend, it is mm. fair to say. Uh, yes, we do have Jan Agatiotov and Frank LeBoff here with us, I think. Yes, we do. <laughs> Staying up late, we've got Ali Moreno and Stevie Nicol as well. It's been a long show, but let's continue it and uh, go for a little bit more. Uh, why not? We? First question goes to Stevie. Do you feel rested after the month-long nap since Arsenal were knocked out of the Europa League? What was the dream you most remember? So basically, last night Stevie thought it was only about last week. I thought it was a week ago. <laughs> last week ago. The Europa League. <laughs> I thought it was a month. <laughs> Not that any of us really jumped in and could help you with the concept of time. I right still now. find it hard to believe, even though somebody's told me that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a big international break. Well, there's nothing to remember. It's just a blank. <laughs> oh. I don't remember anything. It's just a blank. All right. Any notable dreams of late? No, just darkness. You remember you remember the twenty years that Jan said that you were gonna last? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's uh, proof. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Jan, earlier this season there was a supposed clash between Guardiola and De Bruyne. Do you have any insight into what happened? It feels like City have been more direct since. Yeah, you may say that. I think that um, uh, Manchester City has been good at sorting things out. I rem remember that game that I thought that they have talked everything through was Bournemouth away. There was this thing that to try to find Haaland in the right position. And early in the season, as this, this question is about, is the De Bruyne's uh, uh, position. He scored goals, he scored some major goals for them, decisive goals for them, but he wasn't in his best form. And Guardiola is not the guy who kind of run around saying nothing and you have to kind of read him to understand what it is meaning. So I think that he was very clear on his performance, it wasn't good enough on the standard of De Bruyne. And I think that at the World Cup you saw that that was not the De Bruyne that we all love to see, that we all rate. But as Manchester City, De Bruyne getting in top form at the right time of the season again. The other night, Shaka rattled off guys who he didn't give the ball to. This was brilliant, wasn't it, Stevie? Oh. He did not hold back. We were talking Killed. about goalkeepers giving mm. the ball to their centre backs, and he named names literally. <laughs> I think there was like there was five. About, I think it was even more. I think it might have been about seven <laughs> players to the point where even Stevie was like, "I was gone." All right, Shaka. <laughs> <laughs> so just th there's a bit of context. The other night, Shaka rattled off guys who he didn't give the ball to to the panel. Any players you knew had your number and you just couldn't figure them out. Did you have anybody like that, Frank? Didn't want to give the ball I, to you? I, I'm not sure I got it again. It, it's, it's somebody who didn't want to give me the ball? Or did, did you have any goalkeepers who didn't want to give the ball to you? Uh, no, no that, that works. That works quite well, you know. Uh, and... Um, but I had some players, and I'm going to name them, name, name them that, that you don't want to give the ball to. <laughs> and mm -hmm. sometimes I had goalkeepers they don't want to give the ball back to as well, you know, uh, because of, of lack of quality, technically talking. But uh, yeah, it can happen. And sometimes you make the, the choice. If you have a choice between two, you, know, you, 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 you move your head a little bit like that. You say, uh, no, change my mind. I'm going to go to the, the other guy, you know. It you can happen. I think you've taken that question the wrong way. Well, it, it, it's a bit of a weird question, isn't it? Because oh, it says not. any place you knew had your number, you just couldn't yeah. figure them out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how do you take it? Well, go, who, who did your you guy, play your against? Guy, your guy is Gordillo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who did you play against you couldn't walk out? Yeah. So my guy's a, a guy called Rafael Gordillo. Oh, maybe, and then I've been, I've been sent off by the bit yeah. that... So we didn't really need the Shaka line then, yeah. did we? <laughs> it wasn't a good setup. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a strange first line. Uh. But anyway, yeah, as I'm in this chair, I can make the question whatever I want. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. So which, which way are we no, going? You, no, go the way you want to go then. Go with what you I think got, A guy to called Rafael Gordillo, played for Real Madrid. Um, yeah. And I played... Scotland were playing Spain at Hamden Park. We actually beat them. But I couldn't walk this guy out. He was coming down. He was coming down his left hand side. I was playing right back, and he went past me a couple of times, and I couldn't walk him out. Couldn't walk him out. <laughs> and and part, part of the reason, part of the reason, Stevie, I imagine, is because if you look at Gordillo, 
his body his type. Body type, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sort of lanky. He, he, he doesn't quite look like the skillful guy that would be down the wing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different guy with sort of a, a longer sort of... Uh, he's unorthodox. Unorthodox. He's and, unorthodox. Yeah. Yeah. Aye. I couldn't... I, right. I, He's, he's the only guy I can remember ever that I could not work out. The only one. The only one I can remember, yeah. Yana uh, said that he would have passed you... it on Hutchison, <laughs> I'm hearing. <laughs> Say that again, Kay. You, TV. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, Kay. I'm hearing that you wouldn't pass it on Hutchison. <laughs> no, Don, Don was good. Don was one of those midfielders who would try to look for you, but you also got midfielders who just want to use you as a wall. And one of the best uh, uh, midfielders I played with was Andy Herzog, who played for Werder Bremen for Austria and Bayern. He's still a good friend of mine. But he, he didn't want to kind of set me up. He just wanted me to play at me and I should play him back so he could have a have a shot but but I got a player in Austria when I played in Rapid Vienna we had a quite good very good game against Inter and I played against Bergomia and I was 22 and I I won one of the best games I played ever and the next game I, I played St. Pölten it's a club you won't know a lot about and there was a guy called Frivirt and he was a Mandeka so he get man man play against him and for the four years I played in Austria. I could never figure him out. He was not a fantastic good defender or anything. I just couldn't figure figure him out. I didn't know what he's doing. I was looking for his shirt. I was holding around. I could never find him. So there are players you don't like to play. I, for example, love to play against Tony Adams one of the greatest English defenders because when I played Tony I always could find his shirt because he gets so close same as Jürgen Kohler in, in, in Dortmund because he gets so close to you so you can turn him but Frank LeBuff there is never a goalkeeper who didn't want to go give the ball to him because Frank <laughs> LeBuff you have to be said was one of the most technical defenders ever seen in oh, football wow. so I have to give him that compliment oh. Okay. Thank you, thank hey, you. But, hey. but he, he doesn't need the help. Say, he sorry, doesn't Ali, need the Ali, help. Ali, don't go. I know, I know where you're gonna go. I know where you're gonna go, Ali. I know. So I'm gonna cut you off. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm interested to know I'm from more, Ali though, because we did just hear it from a forward there. Was there ever a centre back that you just oh, yeah, absolutely go on, go on, hated Ali. coming? But I just want to have the last word on that. <laughs> You'll get the last word. First of all, now that you're giving me the opportunity, that Frank is not taking it away. Uh, Frank doesn't need the help, right? <laughs> He likes himself enough as it is, so he don't need the help. Uh, in terms of defenders, Diego Lugano for Uruguay, partly because, and, and his partner was uh, Godin, so it was Lugano and Godin, that was a center back pairing, and I was playing up top for Venezuela, mismatch, okay? <laughs> mismatch, true mismatch. Diego Lugano is one of those guys that when you look, you look at him and you look into his eyes, you don't quite know that there is that whatever is going inside his head makes sense it it feels like there is something that is not connecting right there is a level of Cuckoo's nest. yeah the, of, of disconnect <laughs> when you look at him it's like there, 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 there is something there is something Can't they're missing that. there's something they're missing but it's also what he played with that sort of edge he played with that sort of intensity and physicality and and you could tell that he was willing to do whatever it took in order to win the game, even if that meant breaking you in half. So... Can you say that? Yeah, yeah I can say that. Let me tell you, I stared into his eyes. His eyes were scary. And he's not saying he is. He's just saying it's how he looked when he yes. came come up against him. Yes, yes. There is something that wasn't connecting there. At least that was, that was the image that I got from Diego Lugano. And that's the way he played. In fact, I, I remember him getting a red card because he... He killed me, and I don't even know where he came from. I just went to hold the hold the ball up, and he just went right through my body, broke me in half. He got a red car, and I still thinking, where, where did he come from? I don't I don't know where he was. Yeah, and after every game, he was very sweet. He always laughed about it instead of scared Ali Moreno again. Yeah, so don't sure. worry, I'm it was, sure all, that's it was yeah. all part of the. Oh, act. By the way, shout out to Andy Herzog. He was also my teammate. There you go. Yeah, so see, Jan and I yeah, have a true. connection. True, yeah. true. A big that's connection. True. Frank, would you like to say anything? Yes, first of all, I want to say to well, Ali a silly that, question, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> that as humble as I am, you know, I don't recognize myself in your words, you know, I don't understand that. There is what I say and who I am, but whatever. <laughs> I, I totally hear what, you, what you're saying. Um, I had three players that couldn't handle playing against them. 
They were monsters. Diane Dublin, Ferguson yeah, from um, uh, Middlesbrough, was it? No, Sunderland, Sunderland, Everton. sorry. Everton. And Mr. Fyotov. Mr. Fyot, because, <laughs> because it was impossible. <laughs> Because they are they, they're huge like that, you know, you can't get the ball. You get close to them, as, he, as, as Jan said, you know, they can grab your shirt and turn around you. You try to anticipate. You have to go all around the field, you know, to, to go around them because they're too strong. I mean, they, they're very hard to cop on corner kicks, you know, they, they're so high, they're so, they, 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 you can't do anything with them. So I had a hard time with those players and Mr. Fyodor was one of them. <laughs> oh, you're so kind. <laughs> You know who didn't have a problem with Mr. Fjortov? The fish. <laughs> oh, he did not. <laughs> uh, true. The fish, but he was the even fish didn't beat me. There was, the fish didn't beat me, it by was, the way. It was only a uh, matter of time, Jan. <laughs> yeah, it was. Another that was lap, a shot. Another lap, that was a shot. Another lap. Another lap and the fish and the turtle would have beaten me. <laughs> that, that video. <laughs> no, don't go again. The, uh... Don't go again. Don't go again. <laughs> All right. While we tee it up, uh, Jan, how far can Ryan and Rob actually take Wrexham with a record points haul, a fan base some Premier League clubs would envy, and investment on and off the pitch? They seem primed for big things. Well, first of all, I think they have to go be very patient because I think that what you can kind of... You look at Sal Salford, where Gary Neville and all that class of 92 are in. They've got a lot of money there and they will do mistakes. What kind of players will they take down? And, and, and League Two is a, quite, is a quite tough league. So I don't think it will be a Hollywood end to the first season uh, in, in League Two. If they're patient, if they do a long term, you can come a lot of identity and proudness. But I think that all Wrexham, new new uh, Wrexham fans, got to be patient. It's hard to get out of, of League Two, but they got all the basic. And uh, as I'm saying, they will probably get a trophy of the best owners in England at the moment, or in Wales, to be said. They did name Premier League. They love the idea that you can, you can do it. Obviously, it's there for you if you're able to do it, but it's a possibility that you can go Just up the pyramid. Just to give you an example of... People who are watching Wrexham, how long it might take them. I was actually at Doncaster, playing in the National League, the same as the one Wrexham just won. And they had new owners when I went there. Guys with plenty of money, similar to, to, to the Hollywood boys. And I'm talking about 25, 26 years ago. <laughs> And the highest they got was, I think they got to the championship a couple of years ago, but they're now back in League One. So, you know, anybody who thinks that they're just going to spend money and go whoosh all the way through the leagues, they need to calm down. Because as I said, I, I was at Doncaster in a similar spot 25, 26 years ago, and they're now still in League One, which is the third tier. So. Cool your jets. Yeah, I mean, even watching the show, you see, they find out how hard it is. They've been there a few years now. They've yeah. seen that it just doesn't happen straight away, even when you are putting the money in as the PR person. Yeah, for welcome the press to officer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next question. Stevie, should Liverpool fire their throwing coach, Gronemark, since oh. Forrest did score both of their goals off of throw-ins? We obviously well, let this go by quietly tonight. I'd, I'd seriously like to know if the goalkeeper, if, sorry, the throwing coach does defensive throw-ins. Because I, actually, because I actually don't know the answer to that. And if he does do defensive uh. throw-ins, he wants to get the bullet. <laughs> because not only did they lose two goals, but they should have lost another one when, when I... uh, Johnson hit the bar five minutes before Kay. the end. So I would like to know, can somebody please find out, does the goalie coach do uh. defensive throw-ins? <laughs> as well as attacking throwing. But, but, but Kay, I have, Kay, a, I have a serious TV. question. Okay. I, I got a serious question, Kay. Will a throwing coach be fired or thrown out? Oh. Ah. Oh. I, think, I think that was a good one. I, I think like that it. was a good I one. Like <laughs> All right, Jan. No, good I, night, have another, I have another question, <laughs> good night, Kay. Everybody. I have another question. Go on then, Frank. Is that a real job? Is that a real job? Just, you know, work for him? So, hey. is that a job? Ask you his know, bank manager. I, I hope that guy does something else. Ask his bank manager. It's a real job, all right. <laughs> oh my God. We could give someone a job to keep Football asking questions changed. about throwing coaches for Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> just to annoy him. Seriously. He's getting, mo he's getting money thrown after him. Okay, I'm finished.
Last question. <laughs> For Ale, who are your top three MLS players of all time? Oh, ooh. Ooh. Hi, hi. Ooh. Ooh. You're not Ale. allowed to include yourself. <laughs> <laughs> not Frank LeBuff. Um, look, oh. Of course not. I will say I'm going to go old school MLS, Marco Echeverri, El Diablo. Um, bring it back early, two, well, not 2000s, I would say about 2010 or so, Robbie King. Yes. And oh, I was thinking about Diego Valeri. For the Portland Timbers, he was Ibrahimovic. He was outstanding for them, but Ibrahimovic wasn't around all that long in MLS, so it's difficult. Because I could also say Thierry sure. Henry, or I could say other 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 players that have been here for a year or two, and then that's it. Uh, well, this is actually quite obvious, okay? Vamos Venezuela! <laughs> Joseph Martinez. Ah, uh, okay. Will nice. be the third one that I would choose, but Diego Valeri. He's a, bit, a little bit like me. Though. That's got nothing to do with nationality. It's a little bit myself, sure. you know. No, Jose Martinez scoring goals has scored <laughs> goals in this league since the moment he showed up. And had it not been for an ACL injury, he would have broken all sorts of records already. But he's well on his way, anyways. <laughs> you see, Jan, he doesn't talk about himself, but he likes to talk about his country. So he kind of, uh, you know, know the right. same. Hey, easy, friends. <laughs> <laughs> easy, <laughs> friends. Now, Frank, I saw you the other day trying to avoid questions about French players and talk about other moments. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, you were talking to me I'm again? Sorry. Please, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're talking about. Stevie, I'm going to ask you the same question. I didn't hear. <laughs> don't worry, Frank. Best three MLS players. That's hard, because I haven't really watched much MLS for Well, a go, long time. go from your era. From my era? Yeah. Well, from my era, you'd have to go... You'd have to go Clint, you'd have to go Landon. I mean... Jaime Moreno. I, just, I, I was missed, waiting for I it, missed, Jan. Jaime Moreno. <laughs> I missed... I missed Senfuegos. Everybody mm. tells me how great he was. Yeah, it's, it's Echeverri was a difference maker. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because there was a lot of... Yeah. You could say Valderrama as well. Valderrama, yeah, yeah, Valderrama. What, 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 what year the MLS started? 96. Yeah. 96. Okay. Yeah. 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 Carlos Valderrama. Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, Marco Echeverri. And those, those guys were sort of early days MLS, but really kind of pushed the league forward. Yeah. And then guys like Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey took it from there. You mentioned David Beckham. The, David Beckham's influence in MLS yeah, was, was, was much more so. Yeah off the field than on the field itself because it, it, it gave MLS a completely different platform. Uh, and, and it allowed for us players at the time to showcase our product to a far greater number of people than what we had up until that point because of the presence of David Beckham. So he, he changed the, the perception of MLS from the international viewer point of view. But he actually, he actually changed the, yeah, and he actually he, changed big well, time. But, uh, probably won't. One of the most important things that he did was about the inner workings of MLS that he changed. Because what happened when he came, the standards had to rise. Mm -hmm. Because the way teams traveled, the, the, the training facilities, everything had to change. Because L um, LA started doing it because he was coming. Some of the things that he wanted and needed so that meant that everybody had to raise the standards. So no longer could you get away of just not having lunch for players. Here's another example. Like teams never had lunch for mm. players. You just came in, trained, and off you went. Now it's now it's like Europe. And one of the reasons, and one of the biggest reasons, and probably the main reason why that standard rose was, was because Beckham came here. So not just the fact that every around the world knew who MLS was. Mm. But the inner workings of MLS, the standards went like that. Everybody had to up their game, which meant more money. Owners had to put more money in. So that was huge that people don't understand. So if that was if the question had been influential in well, that yeah. sense, then then who's oh, name yeah. was huge. That? huge. Uh, are you, what are you about Carlos Villa? What about Villa? What about Villa? Uh, he, 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 he's been there for a while. Yeah, and and you can make an argument for Carlos Vela. You can make an argument for Sebastián Giovinco as well when uh, he came in for Toronto, how good he was. It's, look, it, 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 
now we can actually can have these conversations about MLS and it's only been around since 1996, but there's been a growth of MLS that continues to happen. We continue to see it. We continue to see it in the salary of players. We continue to see uh, what MLS has become, the stadiums, the training facilities, uh, what the teams are worth now as com the franchises, what they're worth now as to what they were back then. Uh, but I, I, I want to be very cautious and careful that when we make a list of this, we don't just focus uh, on the guys in the now because that, the, the league was built on the shoulders of the guys that were old school. And so I wanted to make sure that if we were going to include names, I included the old school guys. Part of the reason is because I consider myself an old school guy in MLS. And we went through some of the things that Stevie's talking about some of the struggles of early days MLS in order for the guys to have the VIP treatment that they're getting right now. So in the end, you had to thank an Englishman for all of that. I, I, I don't know that that's quite... Jaime Moreno. What... Okay, yes. don't give I up on Jaime Moreno. I was waiting for Jaime so Moreno. Well. Hey, you know, why, you know why I didn't mention Jaime Moreno? I'm going to tell you why I didn't mention Jaime Moreno. Jaime Moreno and I were playing around the same time. Okay? So... Whenever I went around and happened to score a goal or two, reporters that actually covered the league at the time would come to me post-game and be, Jaime, so how did you feel about today's result? <laughs> so the running joke with me and my teammates was that uh, I was indeed the fake Moreno. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. I cannot include Jaime okay. Moreno. Uh, well, <laughs> obviously well, there is only one of us. <laughs> That's the thing. Thank you only one of the best. And there could only ever be one. We've done that. Thank you so much for sending in what your questions. What a relief that is. <laughs> we'll see you next time on ESPNFC. See ya. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.